Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about exceptions in Java. Let's first understand what are exceptions and why do we actually need this concept. The simple reason for having exceptions existence is that developers make mistake. We do create bugs and errors while we write code. It's natural. It always happens that whenever you write code, you might miss out some condition or the other which creates a bug in the application, which creates a defect in the application, and then the testing team finds that defect and then we fix that defect. And that's how a normal software development lifecycle works. So to handle those kind of exceptions and errors, every programming language provides their own exception and error framework to support the developer in spotting those errors and fixing those errors and handling those errors instead. And Java also provides its own exception framework so what you see on the screen right now is basically the a snapshot of the exception framework of Java. And you see it has a long hierarchy of different classes here. This is also an inheritance hierarchy just to give you context. And the whole exception framework hierarchy starts with a class called throwable. So throwable is, is the class which is the root or the parent class of handling all types of exceptions and errors. And that's where the next differentiation comes exceptions and errors. Java treats these two things differently. And I will go in detail as to what is an exception and what is an error. But let's first understand the hierarchy further. Under the exception hierarchy, you see some exceptions like IO exceptions, which is an exception which comes when something goes wrong in the file writing or file reading or the file handling operations. Then you have SQL exception, which comes whenever you are talking to the database, writing SQL queries and something goes wrong. You also have class not found exception, which comes when a class is not found in the in the runtime or in the or at the time when the class is being loaded in the JVM. And then you have also runtime exceptions, which are like arithmetic number format. And there are a lot and lots more of this type of exceptions as well. On the right hand side, you have the error type and then you have some errors like JVM error, memory error and framework error. So now coming to the differentiation between exception and error. Exception is a type of problem which can be recovered in a program from which the program can be recovered, which the developers should handle. So exception is a type where the developer focus is. The developer is responsible to make sure that none of these exceptions occur in the program. And if these exceptions occur in the program, then the developer has the responsibility to handle these exceptions properly. We will look at the examples of how the developer can handle these exceptions. On the right hand side is the error type where the developer does not have any control. You cannot do anything if the JVM has an error or if the underlying memory of the computer or the JVM memory gets an error or the, the whole framework or the Java itself library itself has an error. You can't do anything about that. And those are the kind of problems which go into the category of error. That's why Java has created these two different categories. One is exceptions, which is the responsibility of the developer and other is error, which are not the responsibility of the developer. And in fact, developer cannot do anything if this happens. So this was a quick tour uh, to you to uh, what kind of the exception framework is present in Java. Do read about this framework in detail in the Java docs as well. But just to uh, extend this uh, understanding further, we'll have a look at some examples of the exceptions and how these exceptions occur. So with that, I'm going to switch, switch to the Eclipse IDE and I have created a bunch of classes to show different types of exceptions. So let's go through the first class, which is named as simple exception demo. It has a main method. It has a variable of int type. The variable name is data. And what I'm doing here is I'm dividing 100 by zero. So if you see this carefully, you know that this is going to result in an infinite value. You cannot divide any number by zero and Java also prohibits doing the same because it doesn't make sense to divide anything by zero. So if you run this particular line, if you execute this particular line, this is going to throw a runtime exception. These are the runtime exceptions. Remember, so let's try to comment rest of the code and let's quickly try to run this. So I run this program and there you go. I get an exception which says exception in the thread main main is the main thread which the exception type is java.lang.arithmetic exception. And this is the exception type divide by zero. And it will also give you the line number at which the exception happens. If you click on this, 
it will directly take you to the exact line at which the exception happened. And this is, you know, if you see now, this helps the developer a lot. This information which is printed here is called exception stack trace. And you can look at the stack trace, go to the last line, and this would be the line from where the exception actually originated. If you click on that particular line, it will take you exactly at the place where the exception might have occurred. And then you can look at the line, fix the code, and rerun the program to see if the exception is gone. That's why I said that developer has to handle this exception. Now, as far as handling these exceptions is concerned, I'm going to cover that in the next session. But in, the, in this particular session, we are just going to focus on the types of exceptions and how they occur. This was an example of arithmetic exception where we are trying to divide something by zero. Let's take another example. Let me uncomment this particular line of code and comment back this one. So here I am creating a string A, but the string is null. And null means nothing. It's, it's, a, it's a void reference. It has nothing in it. And now if I try to do some operation on this particular string, so remember A is null. And whenever you are trying to operate so something on a null object, Java is going to throw you an exception because you can't operate on null because null means nothing, empty. It, it, is, it is a dummy thing. So you cannot do anything on this particular null reference. And if I run this program, I get an exception which says null pointer exception, java.lang.null pointer exception, and it will give you the exact reason. Cannot invoke string dot care at int string dot this is a string type string dot care at int because a is null. So it will give you the exact reason as to why this program failed. And then again, if you click on this particular line, it will take you the exact line where the problem is, and then you can fix the problem. Maybe you need to initialize the string properly to make sure that this error doesn't occur. So these are all the runtime exceptions which the developer has to take care of, which the developer has to fix uh, to make sure that the program runs smoothly. If they don't handle it, the program is going to fail and the program will actually force them to fix because the program will not run unless they fix those exceptions. Now, these are the examples of runtime exceptions. You can also create these kind of exceptions which are called checked exceptions. Runtime exceptions are also called unchecked exceptions. You might hear this term as well. Some, uh, some people use the term runtime exception instead of unchecked exception and use both of them interchangeably. So runtime exceptions are also called unchecked exceptions and these exceptions are called checked exceptions. Why do we call them checked and unchecked? Is because these exceptions are something which you do not have to explicitly specify in your program. In this program, I did not have to explicitly specify this particular because I don't know if this line of code is going to result into a null pointer exception or not. But these exceptions are something which Java will force you to handle. Let's look at an example of this. So I have created one more class which is named as checked exception demo and I'm doing some file operations basically, reading a file, writing to a file, etc. I'm using some classes of Java named as file reader, and some methods like read line and close. And if you see the moment I'm trying to read a file, this line has a, has a red marker. There's a compilation error. If you scroll over it, it says unhandled exception type file not found exception. So Java is forcing you to handle this, error, this particular exception because file not found is a checked exception. So if your expression, your line of code is throwing a checked exception, then Java will force you to do something about it. It will not compile the code until you either handle this exception or you rethrow this exception. Again, how do we handle this is something which we will cover in the next session, but you can, you can always rethrow this exception, but you have to do something about it. You cannot just skip it. So what I can do if I don't want to handle this is I will pass on the responsibility of handling this exception to the Kali program. So whoever is going to call this main method has the responsibility now to handle the file not found exception because I've just thrown it. I've just passed it on. I've just passed my responsibility to the callee. And you can do similar thing here as well. If I go here, you see it says unhandled type exception, IO exception. And if you remember, IO exception is here. It is a checked exception. So I can do one more throws here, comma V. And now if I just resolve the import, Whoever is calling the main method has the responsibility of handling the file not found or IO exception. You can also handle it like I said, or you can just add throws clause to the method signature and then the caller has the responsibility 
to fix or handle the exception. So th this is how the checked exceptions work. Remember in the unchecked exception, in the runtime exception, we, we can see that these two lines do throw exceptions, but there is no forced way by Java to tell us that you, I have to fix it because Java doesn't care about unchecked exceptions at the compile time. It will only encounter those runtime exceptions at the runtime. That's why they're called runtime exceptions. But checked exceptions are compile time exceptions and you have to fix them, handle them or throw them right at the time of compiling the code. So that was about checked exception. Now there's also a possibility that you can create your own exception if you want to. So for that, I've just created a very simple class here called my exception. And the way you create your own custom exception is by just extending your class with exception class. You just write this extends exception and you can write a default constructor or a parameterized constructor, whichever makes sense for you. And this is your exception class ready to use. And you can just invoke this exception explicitly. Remember, whenever you are creating your custom exception, it is by default a checked exception. So your program has to handle it. For example, if I go back to this particular class and if I do this, let me just comment all of this code now and remove the throws clause as well. So if I go here and I'm saying throw new my exception, my exception was my class. So I'm explicitly throwing an exception, which was my custom exception. And I again get the error. If I hover over it, it says unhandled exception type my exception. So I have to handle this exception or I can just throw this exception and let the caller handle it. So this also works. So this basically builds our understanding that broadly there are three different types of exceptions which we work with. There is a runtime exception, which is also called unchecked exception, which happens because of developers mistakes in the program like this one. Then there is a checked exception, which developer might not be responsible for creating the exception, but developer has to handle it. And there are some classes in Java which throw those checked exceptions like file uh, not found exception and IO exception. Whenever you are working with file handling operations, Java will force you to handle those checked exceptions or rethrow those checked exception using the throws clause. Similarly, the third type is when you create your custom exception type and custom exception types are also checked exceptions by default. And whenever you are explicitly throwing your own custom exceptions, you again have to either handle the exception within your enclosing code or you can just rethrow the exception and let the caller handle it. So this is a quick tour of different types of exception and including this exception hierarchy. In the next session, we are going to talk about the try catch scenario and we'll see how we can handle these exceptions. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe for, to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.